Hello and welcome to another month of drawing tutorials. This month I want to focus on expression and emotion in your painting and drawing. So to that effect I've put together two different lessons, one on drawing and one on painting. So in the first lesson we're going to look at a portrait with strong emotion depicted by a facial expression. And in the second we're going to look at how color can affect the mood and emotion of a painting. So let's start with a drawing. Here we have a portrait of a little girl who's crying. So the first step here is to crop the picture down. I don't want all this mess that's in the background. So I'm going to play around with some different framing ideas. And when you frame, remember you don't even necessarily have to have the entire face. Many possibilities present themselves, but I like it right here. So you can see the entire face, and then I'm just going to fade the background to black. So let me tape that, then I'm going to transfer this sketch to my drawing paper. So I do want to give myself guidelines, and the easiest way to do that is to use a small grid. So I can grid by just making marks at the halfway points, vertical and horizontal. Go to my paper here, and make those same division marks. Then like magic, I instantly have some points of reference that correspond from reference material to the finished drawing and will make putting it together that much easier. So now I'm going to start with my large shapes. The bottom of the chin lines up right with this bottom quarter mark. That would be here on my paper. The top of the head, the bangs extend almost to this first quarter mark here, but not quite. The face is a little bit over halfway between the first quarter and the second quarter. So that would be about here. And then this corner lines up with this side quarter here. And most importantly, this is where the neck starts, and that is right halfway between the half and quarter marks. So here's my half, here's my quarter, here's my neck. So once I know where the face is in the picture plane, then I can rough out those lines with greater confidence because I know that they're in the right place. And then I'm just going to put in the rest of these marks in that similar fashion. I'm not worried about these messy lines because I can just erase them. And this isn't my final drawing paper, so it really doesn't matter anyway. So I can be loose and free, not get too concerned, don't get too worked up about mistakes. But I'm just going to work this way until I have an accurate rendering of the large shapes. And it's going to be kind of a slow process, so I'm going to do a lot of this work off camera. But you've gotten the gist of the method now. Okay, this is my rough sketch. So, I'm also going to straighten out the corners here and give myself nice clean borders using a straight edge. And then I'm going to transfer those borders onto my drawing paper as well. And I'm feeling really good about the drawing. I'm satisfied with the composition because I took the time to find different alternatives on the reference material before I ever started. So I'm feeling good about everything before I even think about touching real drawing paper. And that's just central to the process. But what I'm going to do now is transfer those lines by putting my drawing beneath the drawing paper and then holding it up to a light source. And then I'll come back to you when the lines are transferred and we're ready to start shading. Now the outline is down on the drawing paper which has been taped to preserve the borders. I also taped the drawing paper down to a sturdy surface that's smooth and I have about four pieces of paper underneath this to make a drawing surface that's smooth yet somewhat giving. So now let's move forward to shading. So what I want to do first of all is to preserve a few of these hairs that are going to be right next to that dark dark background and I'm going to do that by indenting the paper. So use a stylus, something that's sharp and yet blunt so that it won't rip the paper. And then I'm just going to indent a few hairs right where they're catching the light. Then I'm going to darken up the left side of the paper as dark as it can be before I move to the face. And I'm doing that because working left to right I can keep the paper from getting smudged. 
So what I also want to do here is protect this shoulder and the corner of the face so that that line stays nice and crisp while I'm putting down the dark tone. So to do that, I'm going to take some pieces of masking tape, which are really sticky, and they could damage the paper unless I make them less sticky before I put them down. So I'm going to stick them to my jeans, and then I'm just going to carefully tape on the shoulder, and then I can do the same thing with this little area next to the cheek. Okay, so now put down your black background, and I want it to be really dark, so I'm going to use a charcoal pencil, then I'm going to make smooth lines using the charcoal on the side, and I'm trying to go long and smooth and keep the pressure even as I go down. When I get to the face, I can go right up to the tape and not even worry about it. So do that all the way down, and then you might want to come back to the top, turn your paper, and crosshatch those lines. See how one stroke overlaps the next, and because the pressure is nice and even, I'm not getting a striped effect, I'm just getting darks. Your next step is perhaps to go over a third time, going at a different angle like this. And then when you're f satisfied completely, you're going to blend like this, either using circle strokes to disguise the lines or using strokes going straight down. Because it gets so much lighter, I'm also going to need to darken that up again. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll come back to you and we'll move to the face. This is the dark that I've blended I went over it several passes with a charcoal pencil and then I blended it with my finger and then after blending I removed the tape and I got these really sharp lines of distinction up here and down here on the shoulder. Then the hair right here is really dark next to the face and right here next to the face. So I re-taped those areas and now I'm going to move into the hair. And my first step is to look for the shapes of the shadows on the hair. So here you can see this definite shape. It looks like an M. Then I can start to use a light pencil to lay in the shape of the hair on the face. Now, importantly, there needs to be a strong halo of light that will show how the hair is curling and sticking out and also help to describe the light source. I need to keep that consistent as well. So I'm going to darken this up the same way that I darken up the background and pull a few strands through here and there. So I'm going to work on this off camera for a little bit and I will come back to it and show you just how dark I was able to get those tones. You can see how the hair is progressing now. I still have this upper corner to do and probably some more rendering after the face is done. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to the face now. I've blended with the tape in place, so now I'm going to remove that tape carefully, hoping that it doesn't tear. Excellent. Now let's go on to the face. So I'm going to start here and darken up the outline first. I'm using short controlled strokes so I can get a really smooth rendering and the lines that I traced on the paper are going to help me to get those placed exactly right without any guesswork. Okay, so I start by outlining the upper and lower lids using a light touch with a soft pencil and then I'm going to fill in that pupil early on so that I can see if the eye is looking the right way and if I'm getting the expression that I want. The eye is going to be really wet when there are tears lubricating it. So I'm going to add those extra highlights. The tears are kind of making the eyelashes stick together. So they're going to be fairly thick and spiky. Then there are some patterns in the eyeball. I can just put those in as squiggly lines. And that might be as far as I push it for right now. Moving on to the other eye, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do about that level of rendering in the nose next. 
And I'm just darkening up some of these lines. But you have to be really careful that you don't over outline. So you don't want to outline this nostril or it's going to look like a Cabbage Patch Kid doll or something. I just use a really light touch and I blend that nose. So now let me look at the reference material and see the shadow shapes on the face. There's one that goes up right here next to the cheek. Another over here. The skin on the nose gets more red and there's more redness around the eyes because she's crying. So the shadows there are going to be really important. So to put those in, I'm going to go to an H or a 2H pencil and I'm just lightly, lightly, lightly using the pencil on the side and filling in that tone. So I'm going to work this way for a while and come back to it when I have the shadow shapes in place. Alright, now if I focus in more, you can see the shadow shapes that I've put over the face and shoulders. I've also taped this strap. That way when I shade, I'll get a nice clean line just like I did here at the edge of the face and so on. So the next step after you've put down one layer is to blend it smooth. And to do that, for this first pass, I like to use a chamois cloth because a chamois delivers a really smooth finish that's very good for skin tone. So I just carefully follow those same shadow shapes. I'm still following the contour of the face. Be careful around the edges because you don't want it smearing. Alright, but now I've done one blending pass and I need to do the exact same thing with the features and the skin tone a second time. And I'm going to follow that process two or three times or more until the tones are just what I need them to be. So I'm going in again with a 2B and I'm going to re-emphasize my darks and just make those lines really nice and crisp after having blended and smoothed so much of it away. And then I'm going to use a small blending tool and just blend some of those tones and I can use the same dirty stomp to add some shading in the white of the eye as well. Then I need to darken up the outside of the iris. You're trying to use contrasts and different tones to get a sense of depth in the eye. The eyes really hold a lot of the life and the expression and if you get them right half the battle is done. So I'm going to work on the eyes. I'm going to put on a second pass of blending just by darkening up the skin tone in the same patterns that I used before and then I'll come back to you when it's farther along. This is the portrait after the second pass of shading. Now of course I need to do some work in that mouth. I want to carefully accent a few of these lines. Just a line here and there in the upper lip and in the highlight on the lower lip. Okay, now I'm going to add some tone. Pay attention to where the shading is the darkest. So in the corners it's darker, on the top it's darker, here at the center there's a highlight, and then as it turns back to the mouth there's a line of shadow. So I'll darken this line, and then I'm carefully adding the shading in the contour of the lips. So up and down, just like so. Then I'll use my stump and blend that smooth, still following the contour. Then I need to do the same thing on the lower lip. So I'll go in again with the 2B. I'll just add some tone. And I need to add some tone to the tongue. When you're doing teeth, just focus on giving the shape of the top of the teeth and then a little bit of the division and let the eye fill in the rest. Then down here I can remove this tape after I've done the shading and I can add a little bit more detail on the strap. So I'm going to polish those things up that I talked about and then I'll come back with a finished portrait. Alright, this is the finished drawing. So now I'm going to carefully remove the tape around the borders. If you're finding that your portraits are sort of flat and uninteresting, one thing you can do is to work on some realistic, strong emotional content in the subject matter. 
So that concludes this month's drawing tutorial and now we're going to push forward to the painting tutorial.